Welcome to session six in our series on electricity and magnetism. In this session, we're going to explore the behavior of charged particles, specifically electrons, as they pass through a magnetic field. Now, the difference today compared with other sessions we've had so far is the electrons are not going to be inside of a metal. They're going to be essentially out in free space as they pass through the magnetic field, and we'll see how they behave. We are going to use this uh, piece of equipment here. Now inside these uh, two white rings is magnet wire. We'll take a look at it from the side here. And uh, you would call magnet wire is like any other wire except it has very thin insulation. So it can be a very compact electromagnet. I'll zoom in on uh, the windings here and you can see the individual windings. So these coils are going to produce a magnetic field here, relatively uniform based on their diameter and how far apart they are. They're called Helmholtz coils actually. And um, let's demonstrate how they produce a magnetic field. I'm going to put the little magnet there and let's look at it from the front. Put the flag on here so it's easier to tell which way it's pointing. And I will turn on the magnetic field. And you notice it turned. South is facing out. The north is pointing in. Let's do that one more time in case you, you blinked and missed it. So I've got the south pointing in right now. Magnetic field is not on. And let's look at it from the side this time. As I turn on the magnetic field, the magnet reacts. And yes, the north is pointing in, the south is pointing out. And since the north is pointing inward, that means that's the direction of the magnetic field because that's the direction the north wants to go. It goes in the direction of the magnetic field. I want you to remember that for just a little while. So let's take this off. And we don't need that. Okay. Now inside the globe is a kind of a, th a thin atmosphere of argon gas. And we need the argon gas to, to be able to see the path of the electrons. We can't see the electrons, but we can see the electrons as they strike some of the argon atoms knock their electrons to a higher energy level and then when they fall back down the ground state they give off this blue-green light. How do we produce the beam? Let's look at a diagram. So here we have a diagram of an electron gun. We start with the heater. The purpose of the heater is to heat this surface here shown in red, the negative plate. What we're trying to do is loosen the electrons. Now when we apply a voltage, we put a positive charge on this surface, a negative charge here, and that tends to push the electrons that have been loosened now out toward the blue plate. But we want a beam. In order to get a beam, we use this thing called a control grid. It's charged a little bit more negative than the red plate with this little power source and that keeps the electrons from wanting to go in that direction or this direction. So they're kind of repelled inward until they get out to here and now they've got enough velocity that they're just being pulled out through the opening and now we have our beam. Okay and Let's take a look with that view there. You see that, that little funnel shape thing, that shiny little funnel shape thing up there 
is the electron gun. All right. Okay, we're all set to start doing the experiment now. Let's turn off some lights because the beam isn't very bright. Magnetic field is not on at this time. There's the beam. We're going to turn off some more lights and that should show up pretty well. Okay. Next, I'm going to turn on the magnetic field slowly and you'll see how the beam bends as I increase the magnetic field more and more and more. The stronger I make the magnetic field, the more the bending. Okay, and the higher the velocity of the electrons, higher voltage, higher velocity, then the circle gets bigger because the centrifugal force is larger. And what's causing that to bend like that? Well, you remember the Lorentz force, our second left-hand rule? So the magnetic field is into the globe, remember? The electrons initially coming out of the gun are shooting out that way. And that means they have a force on them upward. Well, when they experience the force out in free space, there's nothing to keep them from changing direction. They change direction, the magnetic field, I mean, the, the force vector changes direction. And that process continues all the way around. So the force finger is always pointing toward the center. Let's turn this off. I'm going to give you a center that'll help you visualize what we're talking about. And so as the electrons are going in a particular direction through a magnetic field into the globe, into the globe, the force on them is always toward the center. That's why the electrons go in a circle. If those are positive charges, they would be going in the other direction. Now, it's only the perpendicular component of the velocity to the magnetic field that creates the deflection. If they're parallel or completely opposite direction, there's no deflection. It's only the perpendicular component. There has to be some of the velocity that's perpendicular to the magnetic field to get a deflection. So if it's parallel, nothing happens. Let's look at it from the side. It's just a straight beam. Now watch what happens as we rotate the beam so some of the velocity is parallel and some of it is perpendicular. And when we do that, we end up with a spiral. Let's crank up um, the velocity and the magnetic field and see if we can increase the spiral at all. There we go. Okay. All right. Now, the last thing I want to do is uh, just for fun. This is not a plasma ball, remember. This is all magnetic effect. I'm going to bring a magnet close to, I don't know if you can see the magnet. This is the, the magnet we were using just a little while ago. I'm going to bring it close to the beam and just let it do weird stuff. Does that remind you of anything? We're going to get into that in session seven. Okay. All right. So let's get some lights on again. 
turn off the beam, turn off the field. Now remember, that's the same force, the same force that moved the green wire, except the electrons were free to move whatever way that force would take them. They weren't trapped in the wire. In session seven, we're going to see how that force, that behavior, protects the Earth from the high energy charged particles that come from the sun. And this force makes it possible for there to be life on Earth. Thanks for coming. See you then.